All right, my friends, welcome to episode 119 of Prof and Dev Play Games. This is our Goatee Discussion Part 2. I'm the Professor Larry at Prof Plays Games on Twitter, and over there is Anthony at Summerspeak on Twitter. How's it going, man? Pretty good. Getting ready for Christmas. Yeah, us too. We're wrapping presents and, um, yeah, basically wrapping presents. I should do that today, some, while my family's out, but yeah, we'll see. I'll at least wrap some of uh, my wife's presents. That'd be a good, good use of time, It'd be a good time. time. It'd be a very good use of time. Um, right we'll see <laughs> um we're basically my wife and i are taking turns when one's with a kid the other person's going to be out uh wrapping presents and things like that that makes sense yeah oh juggling juggling a baby it's a thing it is it is a thing that's for sure um so yeah this is the, the episode where we're going to talk about our top 10 games of the year in no particular order we're going to rank our top five next week but this week we'll just do our top 10 in any any order at all um so how do you want to do this just go back and forth one by one or yeah i guess one by one unless one of us says a game that matches up with the other person oh yeah that makes sense then we'll just continue talking about it yeah we'll just jump in yeah um and to make sure it's uh in any order for me i'm just gonna have you give me a number one through ten and i'll choose that game and discuss it so it's just totally random oh right i could do that with a dice yeah there you go you have a ten set do they have is that a thing i have ten ten, ten ciders yeah okay i figured you probably have all ciders (laughs) I have a whole bag of ten ciders right here. Right. Actually, the first dice I ever bought. They're the uh, dice for Mage when I played in high school. For Oh, you still have those dice? Yeah. Wow. Of course I do. Gotta save my dice. All right. Um, I will die, and you can go. Okay. Ten. All right. So my uh, game number ten on my list is Cuphead. So I've only put uh, a couple hours in the to Cuphead, but it's clearly one of my favorite games of the year, uh, just because the animation uh, is just stellar, and the soundtrack is just, uh, you know, a custom-made soundtrack for this game, but it just looks like a, a 30s, 1930s uh, cartoon, basically, um, that you're playing. And the whole, you know, there was like, what, two-year ramp-up to this game coming out, and yeah. people talking about how it's going to be this Bosch Rush game, and how it looks really pretty, but who knows what the game's going to be like. Um, but it really just came across to me as like the best parts of those old school uh, platformer games where you get to the boss and it's just, you know, memorizing the patterns and almost pixel perfect uh, jumps and maneuvers. Um, and it's just the whole package is really, really great for that so game. Like, so like a good Mega Man boss. Really, yeah, like a good Mega Man boss. But uh, I always felt that Mega Man bosses, at least some of them were a little either too hard or too cheap. Um, yeah. You know, just they were more frustrating than I'm than I'm. And Cuphead is for me right now. That's I've good. only I've only played like four or five bosses uh, so far, but I know that the frustration will ramp up later. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that comparison is pretty apt in terms of like just the feeling that you get there. It's just like this, you know, contained room experience with this this boss where you have to learn learn everything and just try over and over and over again. Um, kind of reminds me a little bit of like uh, Tropical Freeze or like Donkey Kong games where you get to the boss and they have a very set pattern and I think those were frustrating but fair, and that's what Cuphead feels like to me. Um, so I'm really, really enjoying my time with it so far. A lot of trial and error, and every time you make a mistake, it's just it's you that made the mistake. So Yeah, that's always nice. Yeah. So that's my number 10. Uh, not number 10, okay. that's just 10 on my list. Yeah. Uh, no rank here. So you're going to roll dice for yourself, right? Yep. Um, seven. Uh, this is one I questioned putting on my list, but decided it does count for this year. Which is Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age. Oh, yeah, totally. Because I guess it's The Zodiac Age. It is it is a revamp, remaster. It has new features, so... It's a new skew. It's a new skew. Um, there are a couple I didn't put on here, like, uh, for weird reasons. Dead Cells wouldn't be on here, because it's not actually out yet. It's early access, uh-huh. and I don't want to put an early access game on here right, right. now. I am, who knows what that game will be when it's finally released. But next year, I'll we'll probably make some time. And then I, def- I definitely have an early access game on my list, so that'll be fun. <laughs> I, I just was like, no, I, I can trim this down. Um, and there was a couple things like, I'm like, if it's a new SKU, I'm playing like Stardew Valley on Switch. Um, that's true. But I don't want to give it... I already enjoyed that game last year. so. And that's basically the exact same game, right? It pretty much is. Yeah. Um, just Switch and mobile. Um, but number seven, for Zodi- uh, Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age... Um, You've heard me talk about it. It's pretty much the ultimate version of that game. It has, it's still shockingly pretty for a game that came out 10 years ago. Um, 
surprisingly so. The characters look really good still. The the environments are a little on the blocky side and low texture a bit, but it, it, I'm impressed at uh, how much how well graphically it holds up. And then mechanically, it was far ahead of its time on uh, gameplay. Like people back, I don't think back in 2007 really knew what to do with it. Mm-hmm. And it and there- seem, seems like now people are much more like, oh, multi-party control with AI is a thing that you do. And this gives you control over that AI in a pretty uh, large degree. So, But you're always in control of yourself, though, right? Always. Uh, actually, okay. you can switch to any character and just directly ah. control them. Um, okay. But you have your own AI, too. Your character has their own AI. Oh, okay. Which you can have turned on and off. But you can, if you construct your party right, you keep it on because then all you do is you... You really just need to move around, and then your AI will start triggering on. That's usually for trash stuff. But when you're on bosses, you'll be you'll be adjusting the AIs quite a bit, or doing it's real time pause basically, bringing right. up menu, doing your own commands. Um, it uses still does an active I think they call it active dimension battle, but it's you still have a a charge time before mm-hmm. you can do an action. So um, I just feel like this, it was a game that back in 2007. People were very divided on because it looked, it played like no other Final Fantasy before it. it. Doesn't pause. It just you just it's an open world. It's this weird, almost MMO. And people were already. I think I remember back in the day, people weren't incredibly thrilled that Final Fantasy XI was an MMO when it first right. came out. They're like, what? Why are you numbering it? And it's an MMO. And twelve takes elements from an MMO to into single player in some ways with aggro and. Uh, real-time combat and the whole thing but giving you the tools to play it single player instead of controlling a party as a one person I and so like i just 11... go no, ahead no, sorry no. i was just gonna say real quickly 11 like drew someone like my cousin into final fantasy who never played one before yeah. but uh, because it was an mmo he was interested in it so i guess they broadened their audience perhaps i think it, I mean, it's not a bad choice it's just i think at the time people were like it was very confusing whenever you have 10 entries that are all single player games and they're like, and now we're announcing Final Fantasy XI and MMO. Right. Very odd. Um, but they wanted to leverage the brand, I'm pretty sure. On, And it worked. I mean, Final Fantasy XI was a very successful MMO. So, um, But XII overall has... The story is towards the end is a bit lackluster. But the characters always held up, hold up really well for me. So I can play through it, whatever. I just like spending time with these characters. Uh, the mechanics hold up, and the Zodiac Age adds just more to the experience. Um, overall, picking two jobs so you can do, in some ways, makes the game easier, but gives even more fun in finding interesting uh, combinations of mechanics. So, mm-hmm. I think that's What's the that? only complaint people have had, is that the game can be too easy. What's, uh, like, the game that you've played the second most this in terms of time log this yeah. year after Persona, probably? Yep. That's, yeah. I'm glad it's on your list, even though, you know, I think it has enough new stuff to, to warrant a, a, re- a rediscussion. Yes. Um, so, that that is one of mine. Okay, so give me another number, one through nine now. Nine. Okay. Uh, this one is Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. Uh, this was a game I think a lot of us looked at and said, uh, what is this? Uh, rabbits with Mario. This is not a thing that's going to work out. It just looks... I think a lot of people just thought it looked terrible. Um, I had no understanding of what the rabbits were, so it didn't bother me that much. I just... I latched on to the fact that it was XCOM Mario. Um, and I think a lot of people were calling it, like, you know, baby's first XCOM, but really it's it differentiates itself from XCOM, I think, in several ways. Um, I think the main way is that I think in XCOM, you could have like a 99% chance to hit someone and then you could miss, right? And then your guy's dead yeah. and then dead forever, right? Yeah. Um, so it's a little bit um, more forgiving than XCOM uh, in those two ways. Um, but there was still a lot of difficulty to the game. Um, as you progressed, uh, the scenarios got harder. Um, the things you had to do got more difficult uh, and more varied and more inter- interesting. Um, but I also felt as you gained more party members uh, throughout the course of the game, uh, that made things a little easier because some of the uh, the powers for some of the new characters were, were OP if you knew how to uh, exploit them, basically. Yeah. Um, which I thought was fun. Like, uh, you know, there's the obviously the the strategy in the game, but then there's the meta strategy of how to play the game. Yeah. Um, so it just uh, the character design for the bosses especially were great in this game. Um, 
it just was such a breath of fresh air just like a really crazy surprise um this game and i just i couldn't put it down for about a month i played it straight for about a month um you know i think my kid was two or three months old so i, I was doing a lot of holding the baby in the middle of the night and just had my switch and, and played through that game um, the soundtrack i think is grant kirkhope uh, it was really good um, from what I listened to, sometimes I would play with no sound, but there was uh, one particular boss at the end of World 3 that's a musical boss that is just, uh, even if you don't play the game, the sound, the song uh, in and of itself is really interesting to hear. Um, it really j- references some some Mario history and just really smart and funny. Um, and that's the thing that surprised me a lot was that the game was funnier than I thought it would be. Um, some of the rabbit stuff obviously is kind of juvenile um, by design, but... Um, it had a lot of uh, good stuff, I thought. Um, and then just the, the strategy, just, I've, I think I've, every time I pick up a, like a strategic sort of game, I just kind of realize more and more that this is just such a, just a genre that I just fall into and then time just kind of melts away. And then I look up at the clock and it's been like two or three hours, um, which is that kind of signals an evolution in, in who I am as a gamer, which is interesting to me. Um, but you know, for a, a third-party title on Switch, it was probably the best. And I think Ubisoft said it sold 20% of their sales this year was that that particular game. Wow. Um, yeah, which is which is weird. Um, but then the DLC pack is 20 bucks. Um, they've launched a few things which I haven't really gotten into because they're all co-op. But there's going to be a, a story expansion uh, next year. Nice. So, um, yeah, it's just uh, if you have a Switch, you just you need that game. It's great. And yeah, hey, you have you have a Switch. I do have a Switch. Um, We'll see what I get for Christmas. And what. Was that one of the ones on your wish list? Uh, it was one of the ones listed. I, I, I put a bunch of Switch stuff on there. So, yeah. Um, with the top actually being Breath of the Wild, because I really want my own copy of that. Yeah. Um, so, I, I'm just shocked that we're talking about a Rabbids game actually being worthwhile. That, I think everyone in gaming media is too because it was just so panned and then when e3 rolled around people were like wait a second this is actually seriously good yeah that's just shocking to me i cannot yeah. believe it but i know it's it's cool i'm i'm glad it worked well i hope they do sequels and i hope they bring in other properties like imagine like a legend of zelda i don't know i think maybe that's too serious for rabbits uh, mario kind of fits um but it would be nice to see like a strategy game based around like metroid or you know something yeah. like that that one might lend itself better, not to rabbit's humor, but to strategy. Yeah, I agree. Um, so another one of mine, just rolled the die. Um, Fire Emblem Heroes. Wow. I haven't okay. played a ton of it recently, only because my commuting I've taken to reading right now more than mm-hmm. anything, um, but or playing on the Switch. Um, but for the couple months I was playing at the beginning of the year, I would put this up there. It's probably one of the better mobile games I've played. Um, like full stop or this year? Yeah, full stop. Oh, like, wow. It's well designed. I mean, it's it's a microtransaction. You get different characters, whatever. Like, but the act, the act that the actual, there's actual tactics in the game. Short battles, but it's not, it's not as much of a uh, filler uh, whose numbers are bigger, I win kind of situation. Right. Um, which you see a lot in uh, little battler, battler, type games on ios um and android like that this one actually was like no fire emblem is a game about tactical combat rock paper scissors combat so we're gonna take that and we're gonna we're gonna make it smaller and make it something you can finish quickly but still have a feeling for uh using some tactics um which i've appreciated quite a bit um especially after seeing like pandit uh animal crossing being brought there um and hopefully in the future some other things will work more towards Fire Emblem Heroes style of like I would say being truer to the property um, and still keeping a, 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 some depth there. Yeah, I feel like Fire Emblem Heroes was the one mobile game that kind of did what Nintendo wanted to do where they yeah. wanted to give people a taste of the property and then say you want the full experience, head over to this console. Yeah, and um, still, you know, making $250 million on that, that it's uh, definitely <laughs> little experience. It, Taste. Yeah, it's definitely the one one ex, the one uh, mobile experience they had that seems to be successful. Yeah, um, um, even though I really enjoyed Mario Run, I know it wasn't financially what they thought it would be. No, and it doesn't surprise me. I mean, it's a premium game. People don't spend money to buy things up front on uh, mobile. They just don't. Which yeah. until although that might shift a little bit because I just saw that uh, Apple's going to require people to put probabilities on their on their 
uh, I put loot crates in quotes, but uh, gotchas, basically. Exactly. I saw that too, um, which you know would affect heroes as well, right? Where yeah, I think they heroes, have to. They already do it anyway because they are in. Like they Japan, they just decided kind of. yeah, they were in countries that already required it, right? So they just did it to the end everywhere, um, right. which does I think make people feel a little bit better about the whole thing. Um, yeah, they're, you're like, hey, you're not hiding anything from me. You're putting your probabilities right out there. Um, so, but now we're see- you'll see a lot of games that will be, hey, guess what? That that awesome thing that you want, yeah, you had like a point zero one percent chance of getting that. That's unbelievable. That's so. Like- it will it will it will change entire probably game economies around yeah. re because I'm sure a lot of developers don't want their probabilities out as they are. So I, think it, I would think they're going to be making things easier to get in some ways so that they can show no no you had a better chance of getting that. Do you feel like Apple's getting ahead of government regulation? Yes, it's coming totally. Okay. I mean, this yeah. is totally a thing of being like, oh, this this could go bad. But again, China's already required this. Yeah, so it's kind of easier for apple to be like no we're just going to roll this out everywhere like why this is going to happen if it happens in china it's going to probably happen other places so yeah. let's just get ahead of this and just be like nope make sure our developers and anyone who wants to put products out here is already doing this well it seems like the least painful fix for the problem because I, I don't know if everyone's going to look for the probabilities um, or if they do they might not care unless it's that low you know if it is really yeah. that low then you know Probably not. Like to get a, you know, like the thing with bringing it back to Fire Emblem Heroes, like you could get a Crom, but you might get a Crom that's not very good stats. So you yeah. need to like keep working for a Crom with good stats or grind it out. Yeah. So they could say like, you know, the probability of getting Crom, for example, is 15%, but the prob- probability of getting a good Crom, way less. Yeah. Um, we'll see how they do it, go about it. But uh, it, it still comes back that Fire Emblem Heroes was a game that I've enjoyed and. Over the last, like, six months, I picked it up. I put a couple, uh, probably a couple hours in here and there to it. Just mm-hmm. playing it as a nice, like, time waster when I'm just out somewhere with my phone. It still blows my mind that that came out this year. Like, I know. this year has felt like a decade. Yep. <laughs> for a lot of, for a lot of reasons. <laughs> um, all right. Up for you, three. All right, three is Injustice 2. Uh, it's the first fighting game that I've really dug into in except for smash uh in the decade maybe um i just don't play fighters that much but i really enjoyed injustice one the story mode so i heard a ton of good things about story mode for this game and picked it up um and it's just such an accessible fighter like it's just polished balanced for the most part um there were some online issues with deadshot i think where he would just wreck everyone because he could just stay across the screen and just shoot at you the whole day um you know dealing with projectile spam basically um, but it just looks gorgeous at 4K, uh, HDR, um, just runs great. There's so many different modes, like tons of single-player modes. Like if you compare it to uh, Street Fighter V that came out with just not, you know, really yeah. bare bones, this was like fully featured tons of like uh, towers, uh, multiverse events, like tie-ins to the movies. Um, there's like a Wonder Woman event where I could run this uh, multiverse, like running through this tower basically, uh, fighting different characters and eventually you'd get uh different drops of like uh movie equipment for wonder woman nice. uh, things like that um just uh not only do you have the story mode like the the main campaign but each character you go through it like a, a a tower sequence with them where you attack like or fight like i think eight or ten different characters and at the end you get like a story ending for them um so there's just so much to do if you're on your own um and i just felt really proud of this game because there's a ton of trophies really fun trophies but some of them obviously are on online trophies and the hardest one to get is to win i think it was like 10 or 20 online battles uh and i managed to do it um which partially because i jumped on at the beginning when not you know right now when when everyone else is trying to figure out how the game works yeah exactly when everyone else is learning so if you jumped on now i i don't think i would win a single one um but it it felt really good to to learn a couple characters like harley quinn and batman were my my mains um and just oh it's just so much fun and now uh, i i had this 20 percent off coupon so i did buy the um fighter pack three which has the turtles so the <laughs> turtles will be coming sometime next year um which is rad uh probably be my favorite uh turtle game in recent memory because mutants in manhattan was it was just not terrible. good yeah not good at all but if you're a dc fan like i really think giving the the campaign a playthrough 
um, but also the individual story um, for each one is is, is mildly interesting. But uh, it's just just fun. It was just fun. So that's why nice. it's on my list. Yeah. All right. What's uh, next for you? Next for me is Doki Doki Literature Club. Okay, that's also on my list, so we can talk about that. Yeah. Today. Um, I don't know if we want to spoil or not right now. I mean. Yeah, probably not. No, but I, it's an interesting game because you expect it to just be kind of run of the mill visual novel, anime visual novel thing. Uh, but then it gets into a pretty big. Overall, the game is a very meta narrative on games, gameplay, choices, the whole thing. Um, unexpectedly so, and takes many twists and turns along the way. Well, and the, the creator of the game said that the, the genre that it turned into is not a spoiler. So I don't know if you want to go that far or not to say what, what does it he say that the genre is at the end? Horror. Horror. It is horror, I guess. It's a horror game, yeah. Um, which I, I can see that. I can see it. Um, it's not horror as in Resident Evil or um, no. Evil Within or things like that. This is more uh, tense psychological horror, maybe? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Creepy. Too. Yeah. Creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Some dark um, themes. It yeah. definitely has dark themes. It tells you right up front, like kids and people with uh, you know certain issues probably shouldn't play this. Yeah, game. and you yeah. shouldn't trust those no. warnings. Um, yeah. You'll be like, why? Why are those here? Just trust the game put them there for a reason. The creator did. Um, um, I thought the game did something like I don't know if what happened in that game could have happened in any other medium, like books or movies or anything. Like it really uh, took advantage of the fact that you're playing on a PC. It did, and you know people are talking about how they hope it ports to the PS4, and I don't see how that would no. work to be honest no it, i think it'd be it, it would lose some some of its strength because you're right like it does interesting things uh storytelling through the fact that you're on a pc um, right not to give too much away and i think come at some of the last time i've it, if it was on a, a console it they wouldn't just be able to port it they'd probably need to adapt it and change some things um around to maybe do things that consoles could do um, right. uh, yeah it would be interesting i mean I, yeah. theoretically they could do it on p uh, like ps4 um i could see how they would do it but it would it wouldn't just be like oh let's just slap this into a ps4 they would have to right. adjust um i think the last time i've had a game that that did that kind of use of storytelling or just kind of interesting stuff with the actual hardware was back when it was like uh the original metal Ge- metal gear solid Oh, isn't it the one where it made it seem like your controller wasn't working or yep, something like you that? Could sw- yeah, you needed to swap if you you swap your controller into port two to fight mm. a specific because so that the boss couldn't read your mind. Um, and if you That's had certain cool. save files on your memory card for the PlayStation, it would uh, reference those. <laughs> That's really cool. And the games that you had saved and stuff. So it was an interesting. Like, that was the first time it kind of broke uh, broke the fourth wall for game right. playing. Um, so yeah. Uh, I just was very surprised by Doki Doki, um, so that's why it makes it into probably ten of the best I played this year. Well, and uh, just having you know, I listen to hours and hours of podcasts every week, and just every single one mentioned this game, and it just kind of like it was almost like a conflagration, just all of a sudden just burning everywhere. And it's like, well, we got to try this game, and I, I I wasn't expecting a lot. Um, and at the beginning, the visual novel aspect was the story was okay, not that interesting to me but uh it quickly got pretty interesting so yeah um yeah uh, kind of the surprise of the year for me to be honest i would agree so number five for you all right number five is my early access game uh fortnite battle royale is on my top 10 is it um, early access yeah it's early access uh, when you load it up it says early access even though ps4 doesn't have any early access you know program <clears throat> yeah it is they call it early access because like the main fortnite mode the horde mode basically yeah, um, it's going to be free to play next year, and they're basically doing a beta, even though they're selling founders packs and everything else right now. But this part is free—the battle royale. Um, we, you know, we've talked at length about uh, you know PUBG using Unreal and then yeah. Epic, you know, obviously creating Unreal, but they're they're doing their own brand of battle royale. Um, and I haven't played a second of PUBG, but the just the the fervor or just how it took the gaming uh, gamers by storm this year just put it on my radar, and I play a lot with. I started playing a lot with my friend Ted here, um, and we try to do play once a week, do duos, um, and it's just a lot of fun playing with him. You know, um, just reminds me of multiplayer back in the day with my cousin playing Counter Strike, just having fun online with someone. Um, you, but the, you play with sound now. 
Yes, <laughs> I do. I, I initially started that game without sound, and that's terrible because you don't hear anyone sneaking up on you and <laughs> just die and not know why. Um, but just the, the way that the game focuses you, like the storm that comes in and kind of just herds everyone toward the middle of the or you know some spot on yeah. the map is a really smart mechanic. Um, it just, just kind of ratchets up the tension a bit. Um, but since I've been playing with my friend Ted uh, quite a bit, I've actually uh, played by myself. Um, and I was uh, playing yesterday uh, while my daughter slept and played two or three rounds and died pretty quickly. And then this, the fourth round I got to, I was in the top 10. And I was like, she's going to wake up, isn't she? And then she woke up, started crying. So I put the controller down like a good dad and uh, went upstairs and uh, took care of her. Uh, but I got to the top 10 and had to walk away. And it just like, ah, such where, a good where, game. Where were you? Did you see what your final standings were? Uh, no, because when I came back down, the PS4 had gone into rest mode. Oh, that's too bad. It would have been yeah, funny exactly. if you like made it to like top five. That and your, your controller's just sitting there because you're hiding somewhere. And it's just <laughs> like, yep, no one found you. Well, and I did. There was, a, there was like a culvert somewhere that I uh, basically was camping in um, because I knew she was going to cry pretty soon. Uh, but I built a wall on both sides of me. <laughs> so I was, <laughs> I was really hidden. So if the storm didn't get me, it would have been taken a, taken a while for someone to find me. Nice. The thing that I think Fortnite does that I don't see, that I think stands out from Battle Royale, even though I haven't played Battle Royale, um, is the building mode. They took the building mode from Fortnite, the proper version, or proper mode, and you can you build houses around you, build walls yeah. to block bullets. Um, my friend Ted taught me, um, like if you're on a high mountain and you need to get down really quickly, you just jump off and as, or slide down the mountain, and as you do, you build uh, ground beneath you so that you don't take fall damage. So it's a quick way to traverse... And then wow. you can also um, build floor. Like if there's two mountain peaks you want to get to that one, you just build floor across in front of you. So as long as you have enough material, you can just get across uh, in the sky. So there's a lot of ways to kind of not break the game, but just uh, traverse in different ways because there's yeah. no vehicles like PUBG. Um, but I really get the whole 100-person battle royale, like why people are excited about it because it's it really is a lot of fun. Um, I don't think you've played Fortnite yet. No, I've kind of stayed away from these games because I, yeah. I worry about how much time I'd put into them. I think it's probably a good idea. I think I've um, I've only put seven to ten hours overall in Fortnite. Okay. Um, so I'm I'm keeping it in check, but it's definitely um, the fever is growing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's my number five. All right, and three for me would be uh, Horizon. So this was a game that weirdly I played, and then Zelda. I think it's the worst thing this game did was come out around the time Breath of the Wild did. I 100% agree. Like, this, these two games should not have come out anywhere near each other. Um, Horizon especially should have just been... Although release dates are planned so far in advance, they would have no clue. Like, this just right. happened that way. So that's probably the biggest disservice this year to Horizon was that release timing. But after playing, playing it, then going to Breath of the Wild, and then coming back to Horizon um, later in the year and platinuming it... Uh, I kind of just fell in love with one. It's a gorgeous game. I really started to enjoy the combat quite a bit and setting up just crazy, crazy traps for uh, the big robot dinosaurs. Um, and I guess that's a key thing is it is like a world you haven't seen before. Um, right. It's it's definitely uh, a new take on an open world, and you're like robot dinosaurs, and then you play the story, and you're like, okay, robot dinosaurs. I'm on board. I get it. Um, and I think some of the stuff is it's a game where I felt just as I was playing I learned more and more as I played um, and towards the end of the game I was like I platinumed it so I did all the challenges and that deals with taking down like the biggest uh, dino robots in the game really quickly at the end and doing crazy things and you learn that there's quite a bit of depth to the combat um, more than I even thought at the beginning Um so you were doing more than just using arrows. You were using the traps and everything else. Oh, traps, uh, snares, um, taking control of different... Because I did have to do all the cauldrons, so I could take control of every different type of uh, robot in the game by the end. Um, blowing off specific what items and weapons off the, the different uh, dinos. Like, there's a lot to the game once you start getting deeper and deeper into it. Um, it I never even did a cauldron. Oh, the cauldrons are neat. They're just like self-contained... Like uh, tombs, right? From Tomb Raider. Yeah, basically. They're self-contained levels. Um, each one has its own variation of different things. Uh, 
They're not the easiest, because uh, usually at the end you fight some some big robot that you haven't typically fought before. Um, mm-hmm. And so that, that can get interesting. Um, but again, the game does a good job of like the stuff that you have to repeat. So I don't remember how many total cauldrons are. Six, maybe? Mm-hmm. Um, four or six. Um, and then like the the tall neck climbing. You're like, oh, this is just going to be super repetitive. I know what I got to do. Go down in the cauldron, beat a couple things, beat the final thing, and be done. But each one actually adds neat variation to that to that uh, basic concept, and then starts the farther and you get starts flipping that stuff on its head completely um, of what to expect. So I appreciated that quite a bit, and I would say that's one of the things in the game. As you keep going, it it could get very repetitive. But they seem the development team Gorilla seems very aware of introducing new things or subverting your expectations at the right time. Uh, well, that's good for a, a a long game. I think that was what a 20, 30 hour game. It's about thirty, I think. Yeah, I mean, how, you probably played longer than platinum. Right? I think I was like 40, 50 yeah. to platinum it. Um, and so I overall like it is a. I'm happy that it's been successful and there will be more in this world. Um, uh, the engine is still being used. It's being used for Death Stranding, actually. Right. Um, so they're doing a lot of support for that engine, and I'm hoping that the stuff that they'll get from that back for like Horizon 2 would be better facial animations, things like that, which you know that Kojima wants good facial animation. So I can only imagine that they're they're that's helping push the engine technology forward. Um, for that. Yeah, I hope so. That's something that really stuck out to me. And I, it's a silly thing, like a first world problem, but it just was so jarring to it, me. That it, was hard. it is a little strange. Um, yeah. I'll give you that. It, the, the engine is great technically about like showing big vistas and views and animating tons of things on the screen at the same time. But when you zoom in up close to a person, not the best. Yeah. Um, a little stilted kind of like... Uh, so overall, like it had an interesting story in the end, good combat... Uh, it was a fun world to explore, um, especially as you start piecing together where in the world you actually are, um, mm-hmm. and that starts coming into focus. Um, so yeah, I, I I really appreciated this game quite a bit, and am glad to play it. And we'll see if it gets into the top five. Do you think that the sequel will be called Horizon Zero Dawn Two, or will they do a different? Um, I don't think it will be called Zero Dawn. Yeah. Zero Dawn is a very specific term from this game. Oh, okay. So it, it really mattered for the story then? Yes. Oh, okay. So it's that that is a so it might be horizon to something else. Yeah. Like uh, who that knows? I, I don't yeah. know. I want to I need to play the DLC still. And Did see you if, uh, have you got it yet? I have not. Oh, okay. Um I need to see if what that continues with the story. Um mm-hmm. and what that leaves open. There's a couple threads left open at the end of the game. Um for sequels but i'm wondering if the dlc does more to to expand the world a bit i know it explores that new tribe right it does you go north a bit Um, yeah Mm -hmm. so i'm hoping crossing fingers yeah i think my one of my gaming gaming resolutions for next year which i'll get into next episode uh involves a horizon so um i hope to revisit it sooner than later all right. Because if you liked it so much that, you know, I, I need to get back to it. Yeah, it clicked for me. Um, it took a little bit, but it finally, once it did, it really clicked. And I was like, okay, I'm in. Um, for you, have we done two? No. Okay, two. All right. Uh, number two on my list, you know, obviously not unranked, but uh, is another one that I played with my friend Ted. Uh, it's Resident Evil 7, uh, which is a game that I would not have expected to play, let alone like, let alone put on the top ten list. Um, just another surprise from this year in a, in a year full of great games. Um, just a very solid, from what I understand, uh, return to form for Resident Evil. People compare it uh, to 4 in terms of how good it was. Um, just creepy. Um, obviously, there's a lot of horror uh, yeah. to it, hack and slash kind of horror. But there's a lot of moments, tense moments, where you're just hiding and waiting for someone to, to, to leave the area you're in because you're trying to you know, stealth your way to the next area. Um, just this, uh, there's this, fa- the setup is basically this, this family in this house, um, is where your girlfriend was living or she went to visit or something like that. Um, and you go there to look for her and she, some, some bad stuff has happened to her, um, some psychological stuff going on. And then you meet the family and they all kind of are grotesque monsters. Um, and 
the story kind of tracks with that um, for the most part. Um, there's some twists at the end, um, but it's just tense um, in a good way. Like I don't, I don't consider myself a person who really likes horror, but um, to play with someone else and to kind of like break the tension with someone else um, was really like I felt like it was the way to play the game where it just it was like a really uh, huge adrenaline rush um, and then you kind of you know come down off of that and then when you're playing with someone you can kind of talk about it and just make fun of each other yeah. for you know just screaming like we screamed so much <laughs> you can cut the tension a bit exactly um, and just you know we were playing in my living room with my wife uh, she was around and she was just like you guys are crazy <laughs> Um, it was just, um, I, I take it that the VR is like, I guess the way to experience that game. Oh God, I wouldn't want to do that. Yeah, no. I might die. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it, th there was enough, uh, new stuff going throughout. Like it wasn't, it didn't feel like repeating the same sequence over and over again. There was a lot of variation. Um, and just, uh, you know, that second, we played it in two sittings. Uh, one was a three hour sitting and the second one we did seven hours straight. Um, oh wow. And yeah, and just, uh. I don't usually do that. It was just, uh, it was such a fun communal experience that I, I really enjoyed my time with that game. I don't think that I would play it again and I'm not like chomping at the bit for another resident evil or, or anything like that, but it's piqued my interest in terms of horror games to play with, uh, friends. Yeah. So that's, I might have to <laughs> visit that at some point. I haven't played a resident evil in a very long time. It, it would be, it's fun to play with people if you could get people to play with you. Yeah. That's not going to uh, happen locally. right now. <laughs> Yeah, you, your wife's not into uh, horror. No, not at all. Yeah, <laughs> I think the last one I played was four on GameCube. Um, yeah, and that was communal in college, so that was easier. And I haven't played one since. So yeah, so that's I'll a, have that's it on the list eventually. Yeah, it's in my top ten. Um, I don't know where it's going to shake out uh, in terms of you know rankings, but it's it's an experience that I had in March, maybe maybe it's March or February or. April, one of those yeah. three months, and it's just has stuck with me the entire year. I keep thinking back to that gaming experience and, and that game specifically. So, yeah, there you go. It's on my list. Um, so for me, next one would be Torment, Tides of Numenera. Mm -hmm. So putting 20-ish hours into it now, and I will continue through it. Um, the writing is really interesting, and it's it's super weird, and I find that it's breaking of fantasy and sci-fi molds refreshing in a lot of ways um gives me a lot of inspiration whenever i'm doing my uh rpg game i'm taking notes at some points and being like oh that's an interesting um interesting hook or uh encounter the only thing with this game that actually seems to have a problem is it's so focused on these weird like smaller encounters mm -hmm. that the main story gets lost in it so you're doing a lot of these like small vignettes you that are are fun and you have a lot of fun with these like really interesting quests but they don't actually matter for the main story so far um, oh okay so it's an interesting thing of like it feels in some ways like a bunch of short stories crammed together yeah um and i was hoping as i'm going that things will solidify a bit more and and make it feel like a more cohesive whole uh, right. overall but it wasn't there yet, and I was 20, 25 hours in, something like that. So, Yeah, I think about a game like Witcher 3, like the Towerful Mice uh, side quest with Kira yeah. Metz. Um, I don't think you had to ever do that side quest. No. Um, but if you did, it really tied into the main game. Um, a so, lot yeah. of the, That's the thing. A lot of the, the Witcher 3 raised the bar in that, in that regard um, for having like the side quests actually uh, feel like they f weirdly felt connected to the main storyline. Right. Um, either directly or indirectly by giving you backstory to some other event that you find that happens in the main quest. Right. Um, so I feel like if Torment had been done, uh, the writing had been done after Witcher 3 came out, they might relook at how they're integrating a lot of this stuff. Um, yeah. And I feel like a lot of games kind of did after the Witcher 3 already. Um, well, I know, I know that like Origins has did, for sure. um, and then like uh, the Inc Dragon Age Inquisition team has talked about how well they would like to incorporate a lot of that into a future Dragon Age. Um, that would be great because they're just like, yeah, this does our storytelling better than we did overall. So yeah. we want to do that. So Torment overall, like it's definitely if you're looking for this, like the isometric Western RPG, it's probably one of the best that's come out in the last couple of years. Um, okay. It's in my top 10. 
just because it is strong writing like at i would say it's like weird it's at a scene level very strong Mm -hmm. but as a whole it's hard the scenes don't really connect all that well so um so it's that's why i feel like i can pick it up and put it down easily also because it's like fine i'll just stop for a bit do something else come back play play a bit do a quest um but overall it's in my top 10 but it's probably will not be in my top five so well it makes sense in terms of uh, the comparison to short stories like if you think about short story anthologies some of them like there's like thematically they're linked but usually the stories aren't linked um you know like uh the witcher short stories obviously are linked but something like stephen king's stories short stories sometimes or raymond carver's short stories they're they're great on their own really good writing but if you try to connect them together they don't they don't do that yeah um, but i think you would expect a game to do that a little yes. more so that's coming to switch next year apparently that really? seems like a, yeah yeah um that's what the devs said on twitter okay. i think so it, you know because it's so text heavy it might be a good place to read it if the text is big enough i guess yeah yeah i'd be i'd be curious on that um yeah so i think you should be down to how many left i've got four left number four six seven and eight all right um i'm just gonna roll a d6 okay and count down from the top third one down okay that is uh legend of zelda breath of the wild that is also on my list yeah which so this is sh- so shocking shocking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> surprise uh it's one game of the year from a lot of outlets already um, it's just uh, with the DLC pack that's just come out is made me remember how much I love that game, which is you know good timing for DLC packs I guess. Yeah. It's, you know Horizon did that for sure, um, but just how open it is, how much there is to do, and it's just like we we've created this world, go like just like your world, just go out and find something, do something, make something. Uh, if you want, ask a question. Can I do this? Usually the answer is yes. Um, there's just so many nooks and crannies to explore. There's so much stuff I still haven't done, and I spent I've played that game for 80 hours, and I haven't done things like Terrytown. I haven't really upgraded my house at all. Um, I haven't. Oh, if you wow. look at the Heroes Path mode, um, I've, I haven't gone to over half the map. Um, there's a ton of stuff left for me to do, and it's just a game that I keep coming back to throughout the year. Um, art style obviously um, was excellent. The I, I like the way that the weapons broke because it forced me to try other weapons. The shrines uh, obviously are great. I've I've only beat sixty five of the shrines, yeah. so there's a lot more to do. The new DLC is fun. Um, I'm looking forward to getting through it so I can see more of the story of the champions, but also get that motorcycle so I can roll around high roll on a motorcycle. Um, I thought the bosses were okay. They weren't anything too difficult. I thought no. that the divine beasts were okay. They were nothing like dungeons and other uh, Zelda games. And to be honest, I kind of like the dungeons and other games more than the Divine Beast, just because they're a little more complex. Um, but there's just, you know, just just the, the the fantasy elements in the game, the the just sheer number of quests that have you do some really interesting, fun things. I didn't feel like things really repeated too much, um, and the climbing, climbing and paragliding, just that combination. Yeah. Traversal in over. the game is incredible. It's like amazing. it's Absolutely. just fun to run around in the world, climb yep. things, jump off things, like take out everything else, and I would probably just run around that world for a dozen hours. Right. Like just because it's fun. Whatever. Um the weapon breaking thing actually like I have no issue with the weapon breaking aspect of it. The there's some quality of life improvements I would like around it. Mm-hmm. Um especially on like it was more when my bow broke. Like I want less times that I have to go into the inventory and select a new weapon. Right. Like if it could just be a quicker way to do that, I would really appreciate it. And it can be quicker for, I remember for like swords and things, but it was hard to do it with, but when your with bow, the bows. when your bow broke, hey, you kind of are in the menus a little bit more than you want to be. Yeah. And so that is the only like complaint on the weapon breaking thing for me is I'm like, I just want to, wouldn't mind them revisiting a little bit on just trying to make it a quicker process right um, overall um beyond that i echo all of your sentiments uh i like how the shrines basically are all these little just nuggets of a puzzle um in previous zeldas those would be packed into probably like a dozen of them would be one dungeon or right more. and now they're like no you do each puzzle separately um which is inter- changes it from like i spend hours or even a day in one thing, and I'm spending most of my time running around solving little puzzles on the world here and there. Um, 
which fits for this game. It's a mature, uh, it's a game for modern gaming. Finally, a Zelda that kind of sheds a lot of its past to give us something new, but still familiar. Well, I think it's uh, with Mario Odyssey. Like there are two games that just seem like tailor made for the Switch, where they know you're going to pick it up and play it for ten minutes and then put yep. it back down because you're doing something else. Like you can you can play ten minutes of Zelda or Mario and get a lot out of it and then move on. You know, you're not stuck. You know, obviously the Bind Beasts are longer, but uh, for the most part, you're not stuck in huge um, sequences. Uh, not at all. Um, and the Divine Beasts, you can leave at any point, right? Yeah. Super easily. Yeah, so I mean, I think that's the, the weird thing. If you want to come to this game looking for big dungeons, this isn't the game for you. That's not that's not what it's trying to be anymore. Um, right. Which is good. I mean, it, it, it tips Zelda, like, the gameplay on its head a bit, which is great. It needed... It needs to happen for 2017. Um, I can't believe how well they executed on it, though. Like, at they, all. They just stepped into a genre that they're not really, you know, they don't produce many games in, or any, um, and then said, we're going to do it the best anyone's ever done it. <laughs> yeah, unreal. it is unreal. Um, yeah. uh, I'm sure we'll be talking about that one more next week. Um, I have a I, sneaking suspicion. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> Next one on my list uh, is Pyre, um, oh, okay. which I put a little bit more time into, just a little bit. Um, it's everything a super giant game is. It's gorgeous. It has great soundtrack, um, interesting mechanics, and then this one actually, when we talk about Doki Doki, presents itself in a bit as a you have the fantasy sports section, and then you have a very visual novel section mm-hmm. um, between things that where the visual novel sections really impact. The, the the sports section um permanent choices that are that just change uh your roster change benefits you get for like the entire game so you have to make kind of hard decisions um and so overall it, it's one that again this one will not be in my top five but as a 10 it yeah it is a it's a game that i'm now very much i'm like as soon as I actually get time to sit down again and uh, feel like I can play something, I want to just power through this one. Um, and I think right now it's even on sale on Steam, the Steam sale. Oh, yeah. I think it's like 50% off. So yeah, I recently picked it up on a... I had that 20% off coupon, yeah. and it was on sale like a couple months or two ago. I haven't touched it yet, but I just... From the, the visual novel aspect... Like, I played the sport uh, part at PAX last year, um, and it yeah. was interesting, but the 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 visual novel aspect and the fact that win or lose the story continues and it changes the story based upon whether you're winning or losing like all that i like consequences for choices you make in games so it sounds it does and i love to transistor to death yeah so so yeah this is an again like them it it definitely has what you do has ramifications and i would say that the sports thing gets more and more interesting too again a plight that could be repetitive but then they start changing up the especially the arenas Right. And like all sorts of weird ways that uh, really change your strategy when playing that, and like what kind of what three characters you'd bring to that match. Right. Um, so it, it's interesting. Like overall, uh, I don't think it's as strong as Transistor, but um, Transistor was really good. I really like Transistor. Really good. I mean, I just I tried Bastion. I couldn't get into Bastion like everyone else could. Uh, Transistor just hooked me. I just couldn't stop until I beat it. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping for at least something from Pyre, similar in terms of just something really exciting um, that keeps me going. The story, I think it has more story than their other games, so yeah, uh, that's, that's something I'm looking forward to. But just the, the breadth of that studio. like Those three games seem pretty different. They um, are very different. I think that's the one thing you can say about Supergiant, is that they're the only consistent thing about their games is they want to focus on narrative and story Mm -hmm. but gameplay is going to be different across all of them radically different and i really want to do another playthrough of transistor (laughs) yeah i've Uh, I've considered it because it's on uh it's on sale too on pc i'm like i could pick it up on pc mm -hmm. uh and replay it there uh, but i probably won't um yeah i'm probably gonna do some more trophies uh, trophy hunt yeah um so what's the top of your list right now uh Uh, uncharted the lost legacy nice uh, Uncharted: The Last that. Legacy is, you know, it's it's another Uncharted. It's uh, as good as the other Uncharted's, um, except for that open world section, open world dish section. 
Um, I still come back to that. I just I get hooked on that just because it just threw the pacing out the window with that game. And those yeah. games are usually really well paced. I kind of felt um, the same way about Uncharted Four, like when it has it was so two, long. when it's two more open world section like in the, the, the madagascar section the madagascar and the jeep and then the boat right um where i ended up wandering a bit more um it just felt it felt strange from a game that's very linear previously yeah, um, exactly and it still wants to be a linear story game right so i almost felt they're like we just want to try out if we can do that um yeah. but i just don't think uncharted was the right place for that no um but the it's just it was a solid game i loved um everything the story was good the characters i thought they had a good relationship um they were interesting the traversal just like figuring out where to climb um just the, the set pieces like there's just tons of action sequences like my wife would be you know pumping uh while i was playing this game and she just was not enamored by it, but really interested like she kept asking lots of questions about the game um and partially because the two characters are uh female and you know it's a big deal for her um it should be to have people that she can relate to in games um, but also just like that they looked normal, like yeah, had ponytails and, you know, not makeup up and not sexy, you know, I mean, they were good looking women, I guess, but not like they weren't there to well, stare at. They they're were there, there doing, doing their shit, which yeah, is exactly. not the most glamorous thing out there. Right. So it's just, just the action. Um, it's just, it's more, untra- it's just a very, it's like a seven hour story, just a very tight focused uncharted um, and I hope that it's a template for them moving forward, like doing more Uncharted. I would love to play more Uncharted games. You know, I'm fine yeah. with Nathan Drake being gone, um, but just you know, give me Sam Drake, give me give me more Chloe. Um, it's just um, got its hooks into me, and I just couldn't stop playing it. It's just um, you know, I, I keep in my mind figuring out my top five, and and this one kind of hovers on the edges um, yeah. because of things I played uh, after it, but. Um, just quality that you know it's naughty dog so yeah the quality of this game is just through the roof and in every aspect and i immediately restarted it on crushing or i think it's crushing the highest difficulty because i wanted to this is you know every time i finish an uncharted game i say i want to platinum this game and i immediately restarted on the highest difficulty to do that and then i you know after an hour i kind of sputter out because i've already played it um so i just need more time before i go back to it um, but it's definitely a game that i want to go back and play um just all the locales, all the levels, all the chapters, they're just so varied, so different. Even though it's all in India, um, it's just, uh, it's stunning. It's, you know, I think you can find it for 20 bucks now, or it's just, just it's a fucking steal at 20 bucks. All right. Yeah, I need so to that, play that one. Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, you know, I obviously have a lot of games that I recommend you play, but, uh, and you have your own list, but that's definitely one I hope you get to one day. Uh, I hope to. Um, for next for me would be uh, Metroid Samus Returns. I figured that was somewhere on your list. It had to be up here. Uh, <laughs> I had a blast with it. It was a return to form for a Metroid game. Um, and it had... People have been clamoring for one for a long time. And yes, it's just a remake of, of 2. But I don't... 2 is probably one that most people haven't played. Right. Um, and they add their own t- new twists on it. Like, it's not just a let's port 2. Because you couldn't really do that when bringing it into the modern age. Um so it has elements of two, and it follows the basic structure of two, but then it uh, adds new game mechanics, uh, ties ties a little bit of the story together um, for other games, uh, and really, like, I had missed a Metroid, like, a, just a straight Metroid game for a long time. Um, it's probably one of the best-looking games on the 3DS. It ever. really is gorgeous. Um, and this, it leaves me... I finished it with 100% completion on my playthrough, and it left me very satisfied and then wanting more metroid and i hope they i mean we're gonna get metroid prime 4 but i'm hoping on the switch we'll uh also get some form of uh 2d side scrolling metroid mm-hmm. um again uh let's see um i don't know uh there's always the hints that they're considering doing uh why am i forgetting it the uh the blue suit samus game oh uh, is fusion. Samus? fusion oh fusion there's okay. always I think it was successful enough, and the team originally wanted to do an update to Fusion. Um, I would hope that Nintendo's like, yeah, this did well enough, let's do Fusion now. But just do it for the Switch. It doesn't need to be for the 3DS anymore. Yeah, I would be surprised if there are any more like huge tentpole games coming out for 3DS. No, it's um, it's it's time is done. And and really, that was a great way to go out, for the most yeah, part. Yeah, like, what a send-off. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Well, I, I just hope Nintendo 
you know, with Odyssey having the 2D sections of Mario and then Samus Returns, like, um, I hope that they keep exploring their 2D roots because those games, they just do them better than anybody. It's true. I know Mercury Steam was, you know, obviously the one that did this uh, yeah. remake, but um, there's just, I know that they've moved on, like, to, with Mario 3D and, and with uh, Metroid, the, the Prime series, but there's still a ton of fans for the, the old games, and I'm, I'm yeah. glad that they threw those fans a bone with yeah. this game. My, my friend Brad here and you both are just, like, huge, rabid Metroid fans, and we're just so excited when this was announced. Yeah, I am so happy that they did, and it turned out better than I could have ever expected. Um. So for you, one down from the top. What is it? All right. Uh, so that would be Super Mario Odyssey. It's on my list is, as well. Yeah, it's a, a game that I was just talking about. Um, it, and I had forgotten how much I loved Mario 64. Like when I talk about like my top five games of all time, like I never mentioned 64. I always mentioned Super Mario World. Um, but I think I'd probably need to revise that because I... I forgot how much fun I had with 64. I forgot um, just the times playing with my cousin, like just exploring every nook and cranny of that game. Um, you know, finding all the stars, uh, entering all the paintings. Um, yeah. Just, uh, it's just so, so fun. And, you know, that was revolutionary at the time. So, you know, Odyssey is less revolutionary, but it is just, um, you know, it's perfect for the Switch. Pick up, find a couple moons, move on. Um, but it offers, I think it offers everything to everyone. Like, for kids, you know, kind of simple, yep. you know, you can get through the game, you know, your kid is uh, enjoying it in, in that area. But for those of us who uh, like the platforming challenge of um, some of the harder Mario games, like once you get to the dark side of the moon, the boss rush, uh, Jesus, like the game oh, is yeah. not easy. No. <laughs> did, did you get through that boss rush, by no. the way? No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's hard. It, it, it's hard. Like, yeah. you're like, oh. Um, we're gonna we're gonna change up a lot of stuff here. Um, it's still the the brutal fights you expect, but uh, but with moon gravity, first of yeah, all, yeah, like, oh man, trying to jump on their fucking heads like it's just painful. Um, I was lucky. I, I don't know if it's just dumb luck, and you probably found it as well. But before you go in, like the the moon craters or wh- whatever, if you spin your hat on one of them um, long enough, it pops out an extra three hearts. Oh, nice. No, I didn't. So find I, that. that's good. So you you can start with six, but even then I've only gotten to the second guy, and I know I could do it with more practice. Like it's almost like Cuphead, like I was talking yeah. earlier. Like you know the patterns, and you know what you need to do. You just need to execute. Yep. Um, but the damn moon gravity makes it so hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's just you know I know there's a darker side of the moon too. There's just um, secrets upon secrets. There's places yeah. in like New Donk City. I heard there's like a recreation of the level World One One of uh, the original Super Mario Brothers that I didn't even find. What? Yeah. Okay. So apparently there's a the 2D version of um, of world one one uh, somewhere in new donk city that okay. i have not found so I, I need to go back and find it there's just so much to find there's just, it's just uh it's like an easter egg hunt that never ever ends it's true uh, um the game is enormous and that's the thing about it is i didn't know i think about the same place as you the luncheon kingdom i wasn't sure how i'd feel about the game like it had i felt like it had a, already had its high point and then this that's kind of I felt exactly kind of like was it. meandering a bit yep. but it has a really strong ending Holy crap! Is the like the I'm last so chunk of the game is so good. I'm glad I didn't know that's what was going to happen. Oh my yeah. god, it was great. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it ends on a very a, on a high note, and then the post game content, like main story, is fantastic. Um, revisiting it's like they, revisiting some locations from previous games. It's almost like they um bundled in DLC into the regular game. Like yeah. you beat it, you go to the the new kingdom, which is just rad yeah uh, and then you as you go back to all the different worlds you unlock new moons and then princess peach is there which is always yeah. fun um just just great really i, I love princess peach's fun. character in this game yeah it's it, you know they've they've upgraded her a bit yeah. which is like i don't need you guys i'm gonna go exploring. You stu- stop fight got whatever i'm done with you people <laughs> it's so rad i mean my wife uh, read uh, an article about that and then shared it with me and said, "Well, look at this. Look what Princess Peach is doing in the game." It's like, oh, I haven't gotten that part yet. That's such a spoiler." <laughs> so I knew a little bit about that ahead of time. Yeah, um, I knew nothing, which was great. Yeah, absolutely good. great. Yeah. Um, I, I was hoping after I had the like one tease of that that post game kingdom. Um, I don't know if you ever came across that. Did you? I, I did not, but I heard about it. I never okay. found it. So I got the tease of like, I'm like, I can see it. 
I'm here and I can see it, but there's no way to it. So it was nice to that's where the post game started. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's a fantastic game. Um, it is all the care and polished touches went into this Mario. Um, and it kind of sets the stage for the future of Mario games. Right. Um, again, and Nintendo is very, has been very good about taking their older, their long running franchises. I mean, like it's time to update these things for 2017. And they did, they did very, did it very well. And I can't believe we have a new console from them that has both an incredible Mario and an incredible Zelda year one. I, I just don't know how you top this year for Nintendo and they keep promising that they're going to be able to do it. And I just, I don't know how they do. But, but, is Pokemon coming out next year? Like that seems unlikely. That's, I, 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 don't I don't think, think Pokemon's Metroid. a little bit out and I feel like Metroid prime four would be out farther. So I don't yeah. know. I don't know what next year is exactly, but uh, smash maybe. Yeah. Um, well, we'll have a, we'll have a direct in January. So we'll, yeah. we'll know something. We'll I start guess, getting but... some, some pieces uh, put in I place. Just, I can't imagine Smash is just going to be a straight port at this point. Is no. They're going to have to add something to it. Um, I don't know what, though. Um, um, so then you've got... What, I got one, one No, I got one left. Okay. And I'm. everyone should know what this is by this point. Um, oh, I, I surely know what it is. Uh, Persona 5. Um, what can I say more about this game that I haven't said and gushed <laughs> about over and over on this podcast? Um, to me, it is like one of the pinnacles of JRPGs. Uh it I've never played a Persona game before this, and this thing just grabbed me and would not let me go for a hundred hours. What and a great! I love the story. I love the characters, uh, the art, the music, the sound. I had all ties together. Like there's, it's strange when you see all those things like executed so perfectly. Um, if we only talk about like what like slight nitpicky type things i feel the game goes on slightly too long at the end um yeah the ending just kind of drags um not because it's not a good ending at the end it's just you're like all right we just need to get to this now like i have to do this thing before i get there oh god um but it works um it, it kind of in the sense that their their dungeons get very large and you typically will not be doing them in like one play session mm -hmm. like some of them took me like three nights to get through so Dang. of playing like because they get especially towards the end these like the big dungeons they're they're super well crafted it's just they're huge <laughs> um so it 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 took some work um but beyond that uh i never stopped enjoying the game i always wanted to spend time with these characters and more and the hard decisions when you're in your uh day life trying to balance all your relationships with characters and things that you want to do. Um, yeah. Uh, this game is something special and probably will be around for a, talked about for a very, very long time. Is it a game that lends itself to a DLC or is it just one, like there's no DLC coming? No, this game? no, there would okay. not be DLC. I, I yeah. the most that they've done DLC wise is costume packs. Oh yeah. Right. That's, that's it. Like this does not, it's when it's done, it's done. You finished yeah. your, your, your hundred hours and but the thing is it's like they couldn't really insert other things like new characters in into it or other things to do because it seems so well balanced across like the choices that you have to the time you have and so adding more choices on your time would just make it feel like you couldn't do everything you wanted to do um, right even if it's a stretch now like it it feels like a game that this is the game you get because this is what we designed to be the best experience. Well, and they've been working on that game for a long time. I think they Persona have. 4 came out on the PS2, so uh, this was 5 yeah. was designed for 3, and then didn't make it. I mean, yeah. it came out on 3, obviously, but it was they, yeah. on 4. They, yeah, they waited. They delayed it. It's probably worthwhile. I think it's done great for them. So, yeah. Um, definitely a top 5 game where it gets slotted in. I don't know exactly, but you got one more week or I got, a little uh, yeah. week to decide. Yeah, I have to sit here and figure this out. Because we're uh, we're dropping this on Christmas Day, but it's going to be... We're recording it Friday before Christmas. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess that leaves me with one game. Um, and this is the one game... Let me let me double check real fast before I say the sentence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. This is the one game on my list that I have not beat. Okay. I've put 25 hours into this game, and I'm 
not really got too far outside of the um, opening area, um, and it's Assassin's Creed Origins. Nice. Um, I feel like I played enough to know that it's one of my favorite games of the year. Um, there's just this is the most like fully realized game world I think I've ever seen. Like the way that they recreated ancient Egypt is stunning. Like there's just details upon details that they don't even need to be there. Like the the NPC routes, what they're doing out in the countryside, like the 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 fa- flora and fauna, how they are, um, you know, you know the plants either swaying in the wind or the the birds coming through or the the animals running through the forests and trees. Um, there are so many different. Um, I think I've been to like seven or eight regions, and they're like fifteen or eighteen or even more. Um, and they're all different. They're all interesting. It's just it it looks like the team. This is the team that did Black Flag. Looks like they looked at what The Witcher did. Looked at what Assassin's Creed does. Looks at what looked at what like Diablo two does. Um, or three in terms of loot drops for that one, um, and just mashed it all together um, and put a little bit of Skyrim um, where you can have a main quest or you can just do all this other side content. Um, and I just I keep getting lost in side content. Like I just I, I see something I'm like, ooh, I want to go see what that is. Uh, just like Breath of the Wild. Um, oh, what's that over there? And just go. Um, I'm in areas where I shouldn't be, um, avoiding enemies, like, like getting towers to. Um, to increase your your eagle's power and um, just exploring the map, um, the story for what it is, I think is interesting. Um, I just met Cleopatra, which is was an interesting sequence. Um, the characters are awesome. Bayek is um, just really fun character. Um, it's I haven't played too many Assassin's Creed. So I, you know, obviously I, I beat Syndicate. I played a bit of Black Flag, bit of Unity, bit of Two. Um, this is, I mean, I loved the hell out of Syndicate, and this is easily better. Um, just it's just loving care they put in this game. And then next year they're going to have that tour mode where you don't have to do any um, you know, battles or, or combat or anything, and just explore and take different tours of ancient Egypt. Um, there's just so much, um, so much in this game. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really want to play this one as I hear more and more about it. Like, I think it'll be a good time to come back to it. And I'm curious if they're going to take more time between the next one. I hope so. And if, just be if, like, if, you know what? We're not. We're done with this being a yearly thing. It doesn't need to be a yearly franchise. Um, right. And if it's, you know, if they take the time and they produce games like this, like, th- this is like, you know, it's not up with Witcher 3 just because I think one of the main things about Witcher 3 that I liked... Um, was that the, how the side story is tied more into the main story, but also yeah. like the shipping, basically? Yeah. Like, are you going to go for uh, Triss or Yen or whatever? Yeah, that, yeah. that doesn't exist in this game. Yeah. The relationship building um, that, that's in Witcher or even Persona. Um, I think if yeah. that were in this game, it would be up there. Um, but it's phenomenal. The game is just gorgeous, oh. great. I, you know, I, I got it for 30 bucks and that was, that was a steal. Like, this yeah. is worth, this is easily worth like a hundred bucks, this game. Um, so. It's unreal how good this awesome. game is, and it's you know I feel pretty good talking about how much I like it, even though I haven't even I haven't gotten through like even a third of the main story. Um, I still have tons of things to unlock just because I've put so many hours in this game, like more than I've put into some of these other games on my yeah. list. I'm more time with Origins than Mario, for example. Uh, it's so cool. I need so, to. Yeah. I'm glad that they they made a strong successor with taking time off. Um, it, it was the right choice. Yeah. Ah, so All that's right. uh, both of us, uh, our top 10 in no particular order. Uh, next week, we are going to break it down and actually rank our top five. And then we will, from those lists, uh, create our mathematical uh, game of the year for uh, our joint podcast. And then a couple other things as well, like uh, best gaming moment, um, for example, and a couple other uh, fun little lists. Um, yeah. Anything else to add before we sign no, off? Anthony? That's it. Top three is going to be very hard for me. Holy I, crap. I think... I think my number one is probably wrapped up, but two, three, four, and five, I have no idea. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> I think one is locked up. I think. Maybe. I'm going to have to sit on this. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You keep going back and forth. Uh-huh. I'm really curious how that, the list you just said today, like what, I'm going to see if I can guess what your top five will be, and I'll just compare it to what you actually give me next week. Yeah. Um, it's a good plan. Yeah. You should do that for me, too. It'll be fun to, to, to compare notes. Um, yeah. So next week. Yep, next week, top five. All right, folks, enjoy your Christmas. Uh, your, this is coming out Christmas Day, so Merry Christmas to you. Happy holidays to everybody. Yeah, thanks. Happy holidays to everybody. 
and yeah should be a good time yeah all right that's the end of episode 119 of prof and dev play games i'm at prof plays games on twitter and he's at summer speak on twitter we'll see you next week all right later everyone